And welcome back to You Read John at 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student of computer science at the University of Virginia. And today we're going to be not talking about math again. We're going to be kind of going deep into the, the depths of the mind uh, on kind of a speculative level, but a level that's worth kind of considering, in that we want to think about what your subconscious is capable of doing. It's certainly capable of making mistakes. Uh, if you try to focus really hard on a task that requires agility, like balancing on a tightrope, or um, holding a cup of coffee while walking, uh, or um, kind of not blushing or not you know, looking embarrassed in an embarrassing situation, you can tell that your subconscious is actually capable of doing a lot of things on your behalf, or possibly not on your behalf, on maybe its own behalf. It's operating pretty much 24-7, so whereas your conscious mind is really only at best up about 16 or 15 hours a day. Note down your dreams and be willing to sleep on things and to be able to give your subconscious problems and to get your subconscious working for you. Because if you can get even just a small amount of work from your subconscious on the problems that matter to you, you might be able to get a little bit ahead of yourself in terms of what you're capable of doing otherwise. Your subconscious is able to do things. You're, you're, if you're walking with a coffee cup, you can train yourself so that you don't have to even think about whether or not the coffee is balanced or not. In fact, it's better if you don't think whether or not your coffee is balanced because your subconscious will balance the cup. Your subconscious will do things for you. You just have to teach it, or rather you just have to trust in the your own ability to do things in certain ways. So use your subconscious. Focus on the things that you want, prime your mind to be thinking about it, and then let your subconscious do some of the problem solving for you. Go on to other tasks. If you're worried about something, your mind is going to be spinning around on that topic no matter what you do, and whether or not you think about it, until the issue is resolved. And so at some level at least, you know, be willing to give that deep part of your mind those problems to work on and be willing to work on other problems. It will, you'll be distracted, you'll, you'll be stressed, but at the same time, get your subconscious working. Put it to work. It's a powerful part of you. Don't let it just sit idle. The problems in discussed in the polio video, a lot of them are complicated and will require a lot of thought. A lot of them will take days to solve, maybe even years or possibly centuries. If you can get your subconscious working on those problems, all the better. And so this is going to be related to other things that we've talked about. It's related to the uh, different approaches we do. Because sometimes you can get your subconscious to suggest which approach that you should be taking. Or possibly an approach itself might just be to get your subconscious working on it and to you know, work on whatever it is that you want to do without thinking about it. Working without thinking. What a concept. Uh, you know, getting your, your yourself, the, the parts of you that are, are, are not awake, get them to do parts of your work for you. Uh, if you can get to the point where you can make decisions about how complex something is, based on how stressed you are, or, or based on how much kind of work you feel that they are, are causing you, that might be a clue to the complexity involved that you can use in Occam's Razor. Obviously, it's not a very good clue. There are a lot of better clues that you can use. But sometimes you really have nothing else to compare it to. And so that this kind of feelings and emotion, again, going to the argument from the motion video, that may be a, a hint that there's at least something there that your subconscious is working on. Be kind of fine, or be aware of what I guess whether you are, in fact, or not, uh, worrying about something or, or kind of stressing about something, if you are, kind of consider that as part of the complexity of solving that something. You can view the, all the data video. There's a lot of things that you're not consciously able to take into account. Uh, you can read books that are so big that you cannot possibly fit all of the contents in your head. However, you might be able to prime your subconscious with the patterns involved in that data. You can prime your subconscious. I've heard of people who listen to English uh, 
TV and radio as a way of getting themselves ready to learn more English so that they understand little bits and pieces of it, but they don't understand the whole of it. But they will slowly start to train their ear and their brain from what they hear, the contours of what generally follows what in speech patterns. Uh, your brain is capable of all sorts of pattern detection, going back to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 video. Use it. Use your brain's pattern detection on the subconscious level. Expose it to the data that you're worried about. Expose it to the data that's important. Expose it to the data in a way that you're able to kind of start to get a feel, a sense for the relationships between that data, the relationships that you can model using the logical connectives from NAND all the way up to other logical connectives using truth tables or otherwise. Get it a feel for it, just even at a, a level that isn't expressible at a formal level. Expose yourself to what you want to know. If you want to be an engineer, start you know, associating or spending time around engineering topics, around engineering designs. You know, start to, even if you don't understand the whole of it, looking at the Fnord video, you can pick apart piece by piece the things that you don't understand. But try to force yourself to get a, a big picture view going to the forest versus trees. Uh, I've had someone describe to me the process of reading a paper, where you basically read the paper and even if you don't understand things or have things to say, don't write it down on the first pass. Go read the whole paper, and then when you're finished reading the whole paper, then go back to the top and reread it, and then write down what you were going to say at every single point, and write down all the words that you didn't understand at that point, because it will force you to get a big picture view of what you just read, to the extent that you're capable of doing so. Yes, you waste a little bit of time reading things without fully understanding exactly what you're reading, but at the same time, your brain is capable of these big picture views, these big picture visions of crystallizing what everything means all at once, but it happens at the subconscious level. Use your subconscious. Use what you're capable of doing. Don't just use the formal, uh, you know, expressible parts of what you know and what you're capable of. Use the whole of everything that evolution has given you, with the you know, billions of years. Most of it was done on the subconscious level. Most of the hard work in making your brain work was done making your subconscious work. Use it. Use what you're capable of. Go back and uh, kind of you know, the, a lot of, especially circular reasoning, requires that you have this really kind of uh, detached view of things, that you're able to see the big picture, that you're able to see the relationships, not just at a formal level, not just at a very concise and descriptive level in terms of symbols, but in terms of what's actually happening, what actually is being done to the data involved, what is actually uh, being represented in those particular instances. The kind of deep relationships, the kind of relationships between the parts, not necessarily the parts itself. When we reason by analogy, a lot of the reason that we're able to kind of understand and accept analogies happens at the subconscious level. There's a flavor, there's a taste, there's something that's just right about an analogy, when not only does it fit the data, but it does so in an elegant way, in a way that appeals to your subconscious. Be aware of this. Be aware of why you like some analogies and you don't like others. Be aware of where your subconscious is misleading you and biasing you in certain directions, and where it is merely making arbitrary decisions. See if you can measure it. See if you can pay attention, write down, or take data on that question. Uh, when you're dealing with authority, a lot of the problem with authority, uh, and going back to the argument from authority video, is that the thinking gets done kind of outside of your head and inside of the head of another person. And so they are trusting that you will just do what you're told and that your thinking isn't necessarily important. Your subconscious thinking isn't necessarily important. So it's kind of another step removed from having your subconscious do some of your work for you as well. The read the fucking question video. You know, go go back to that. That is what what is happening there is your subconscious is reading the question. You are putting that question into your subconscious and you're getting an answer of what you think the question is about from it. So in that case, it's kind of the opposite. In that case, you're forcing yourself to be conscious and aware of the question, be present at the question and understanding the question itself. However, there are other things, other places where you can be, where reading the question, you can skim the question to get a first view of it, to prime your, 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 yourself and to, to get a, an understanding and view of it before you then read the question on a conscious level.
the uh, going back to the alchemy video. They they were interested in a lot of things in the alchemy. Alchemy is interested in a lot of things, and one of the things that alchemy was interested in was the relationship between how you approach something and your understanding of it. So it's worth noting that they were kind of interested in using your approach to your own subconscious towards finding out truth. Uh, it's related to Descartes, because in Descartes' view, he would have uh, kind of viewed what your subconscious does uh, in a skeptical manner, so that you know you can use your subconscious as a way of kind of probing yourself to make sure that it's doing the right thing. And so that this is going to be a, a something that's available to you, you should use it. So hopefully you do. Um, as usual, if there's any questions you'd like to ask about how the subconscious works, uh, although it is not fully understood, uh, I can certainly kind of venture a guess at it. Uh, and as usual, uh, feel free to donate anywhere where this video is posted, or comment anywhere where this video is posted. We will see you in the next video.